Silas University in picturesque Styria, where nothing, not even the homecoming goat sacrifice, disturbs the pursuit of knowledge. But under the surface of this placid institute of higher learning, you'll find mystery after mystery. Just last week, students using the catalog reported a search window claiming it was lost, begging for help to find Dudley Chapel, which burnt down in 1904. So, harmless prank or terrifying mystery waiting? Betty Spielsdorf, ladies and gentlemen, roommate extraordinaire and best friend of the last several weeks. So, how'd you do? 62%, which is pretty cool. It's like a gentlewoman C. <laughs> Okay. We're gonna go out and celebrate. You are so much better than a 62. Maybe if there was a little less celebrating and a little Come more studying. Come on, dude. This is what college is about. And finally, you're out of that hamster ball that your dad had you living in. Just have safety concerns. And now it's time to live. Like right now. What are you doing right now? My journalism project. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> the quad mixers right now, okay? I'm not leaving you here alone talking to the internet about... The library catalog possibly achieving sentience? Okay, so some library catalog prank. I, I don't know, but all I know is it is 6 p.m. on a Friday. We're gonna get you in something cute. Ooh, this is bad. Okay, we're gonna have fun. Let's do it. Okay, but I have to finish no this before. Mm -hmm. This is our college adventure, come on. Besides, the spooky library will be there tomorrow. Hey, Danny's gonna be there, that TA. Will you come? Please come. Yes, fine. Yeah! Some days I'm walking down Oh crap, have you been on this whole night? Let's just do a little before and after, shall we? And how is the Jaeger Bominatrix doing this morning? Betty? Bets? Is that some kind of a joke? Ugh. What the? Ooh. Dear student, your roommate no longer attends Silas. What the what? No, no, what I'm saying is there was a card, but it is wrong. There is no way that Betty decided to drop out and go home at 2 a.m. on a Friday night with none of her stuff. And even if she did, there is no way in hell or Hogwarts that she left me with this official note card. It is multiple choice. Dear student, your roommate no longer attends Silas University. He or she, A, lost his or her scholarship and decided to go home. B, has elected to attend another school due to your extreme incompatibility. C, experienced a psychological event that left him or her unfit for student life. Or D, cited personal reasons and really, why does anybody do anything? Exit procedures have commenced. No action on your part is required. I mean, really? Not to mention that I found it next to a pile of ick that started growing mushrooms the next day. So what I'm gonna need from you, since nobody else seems to care that a girl is missing, is to talk to the Dean of Students, okay? Oh, I swear that is like the third time. Come on, Betty, just text me back. Say that you've slept over with some subliterate gym shark or something. Don't judge. My dad thought I'd use an iPhone to send high-resolution selfies to potential stalkers. Okay. Come, join the fun. You have reached the office of Student Affairs at Silas University. If you know your party's extension, please dial it at any time. Have reached Silas Campus Security. If an incident is in progress, please dial 4815 or activate the nearest blue pentacle phone. For missing persons, please press 1. To report an escaped entity or poltergeist activity, please press 1. Uh, hi, Betty, yes, uh, oh, yes, yes, yeah, I am the girl with the missing roommate. Thank you so much for calling. Nobody else seems to, what? No, I don't need a new roommate. I already have a roommate, or I would if she wasn't missing. No, you can stop yelling. I'm just. The university doesn't want to help find Betty? Fine. I've got three weeks of a journalism class, and I've seen all of Veronica Mars. I'll find her myself. This is insane. 
There were hundreds of kids at that mixer and nobody saw anything, like our floor don, Perry. Um, I may have seen her dancing across the quad, but I don't know, things just got so foggy after the alchemy guys released, you know, the fog. Or the creeps from Zeta Omega Moo. Uh, like a hottie in a pink halter? I hit like three of those last night, Chiquita. Or anybody, really. Yeah, but wasn't she with you? She was. God, why didn't I keep better track of her? What the hell happened last night? Hey. Um, excuse me, but who the hell are you? Carmilla. I'm your new roommate, sweetheart. My what? You're your new roommate? I have a roommate. Well, don't you catch on fast. No, I mean, I have a pre-existing roommate, a prior roommate. Her name is Betty. Oh, yeah? Where is she? She's missing right now. I see her. So you can't produce this Betty or anything, but you'd like me to leave? Well, I wouldn't put it exactly like that. What are you doing? Well, you see, I may not have this in it, but what I do have is a letter from the Dean of Students that says I live here now. Stop that! Those are not yours! Oh, they're in my half-room, cutie, and possession is not intense. This isn't your room. Tell you what, you cough up Betty, and I'll hit the road. But until then... Oh, this is not happening. You are not my new roommate. I'm gonna find Betty, and you're gonna be out of here so fast, there's gonna be scorch marks on those leather pants of yours. <sighs> well, it is day three of the incursion here in room 307, and Betty is still missing. She has been officially replaced with the roommate from hell. Don't believe me? Let's roll the surveillance. She keeps wearing Betty's clothes. She steals my chocolate. She never cleans anything. She's never awake before 4 p.m., which is perhaps unsurprising when she's up all night with some girl from my anthropology class. In my bed. But it's fine, really, because when Carmilla's latest study buddy came over, I may have mentioned that Carmilla has raging cold sores and she should probably get herself checked out because they are like super contagious. Boom, revenge is mine. And so is Carmilla's super special soy milk that I'm not supposed to touch because that's just the way the world works, cutie. See? Blood. In the milk container. In my creepy roommate's milk container. So she's gotta go, right? I mean, this is like a death threat or a health code violation. And the time has come for Carmilla to go. Well, there's no denying it's a little odd. Odd? That's where you're going with this? How many people you know take typo with their chocolate crunch? Okay, LaFontaine, you know you're not here in an official capacity, so as Laura's Are you really gonna Florida, try and pretend this isn't a total freak show? We haven't even given the roommate a chance to explain herself. For all we know, it could be some kind of, like, protein supplement. For extreme hemoglobin deficiency? Okay, I know you want to pretend the weird here is all Dr. Seuss pair, but in my world, the Alchemy Club press gang's test subjects in the calf. As this floor's unofficial truth speaker, I'm gonna tell Frost she needs to wise up if she intends to survive. Oh, see? Surviving. Yes, I like that plan. And in order to do that, we need to get rid of Carmilla. Well, it's not that I don't understand, but don't you think you ought to talk to her first? A lot of problems can be solved through good communication. A lot of problems can also be solved by taking hair and blood samples to figure out exactly what kind of freak it is you're dealing with. Oh, wow. Oh, that, okay. Hmm. I'm a bio major. Okay, if you can't help me, should I go to the dean? What? That's really not a good idea. Yeah, better just handle this yourself. By complaining to the dean, you'd probably just draw attention to yourself and you don't want that. They could stick you with someone much worse. You don't want to end up with some Draco Pyromaniac, you know? <laughs> I'm sorry, Draco Pyromaniac. Besides, what? your old roommate will probably be back soon and then Carmilla will have to move out. It's a distinct possibility. That's what happened with all the other girls who disappeared. I'm sorry, did you just say all the other girls who went missing, as in this has happened before and nobody said anything? Well, it was nothing unusual, just... You know, girls wanting to have a good time and getting a little carried away. It was completely unusual. How do you not know about this? Both of them went missing for two days and then they just show up in a dorm room or a psych classroom with no memory what happened to them? It was Frosh Week. They had too much to drink. Yeah, because that causes random disappearances. Susan, I La Fontaine? Swear? Really? Fine. La Fontaine. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. I need to talk to these girls. Like, right now. Oh! Yeah, of course, you should talk to them, um, except maybe... Except maybe what? Well, maybe not right now. Um, they weren't hurt or anything, just shaken up, and you're a little intense. Intense? She means they're traumatized and you're on a mission, girl. But, but I'll talk to them and see if they feel up to meeting you, okay? 
Yeah. Okay. You must be Carmilla. Must I be? Well then, um, so nice to have you on the floor. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of you. Come on, Susan. And Laura, remember, communication. Yeah, you're not gonna find your soy milk in there. It was just a prank. You filled a milk container with blood as a prank. It was food coloring and, and, and corn syrup. Oh, you are such a freak. There are worse things to be. Sure. How about a carmy cold sore? That would be worse. Oh, were you the one spreading those little rumors? Nice try. That bunched up little face you make when you're angry is hilarious, Buttercup. I wonder how hilarious it'll be when I get the Dean of Students to kick you out. <laughs> you wanting the Dean? I'd pay to see that. Think I won't? Be my guest. Sorry, are we like interrupting something? Really not. Okay, cool. Hey! Hey, don't I know you? From an intro class? I doubt it. Okay. Um, um I'm Sarah Jane. And this is Natalie, the floor don said, Laura, Laura wanted oh, to yeah, talk Laura, to us. yeah, Laura, that's me. Um, okay. Please, come in, sit down. Thank you. Know you my roommate. She's a sociopath. So, earlier this year, there was a thing where you guys kind of disappeared. Devastating interrogation technique there. Yeah, it was freaky, okay? One second, I'm at the swim team's under the sea party. I'm uh, downing Fizzy Dagens. And then, the next thing you know, I'm in my dorm room, I'm waking up, all mm -hmm. these people are yelling at me, they're saying I've been missing for two days. And the same kind of thing happened to you? Yeah, like I was at a wine and cheese, and then I was standing in the middle of a lecture hall a day and a half later. Mm -hmm. Like nothing in between. Right. And you guys don't remember anything? No. I don't know, someone that you saw, something <sighs> that struck you as odd? Al Zilcho, but... Dagens do have a ton of Sambuca in them, right? So... Oh, well, there's the scoop of the century. Feel free to stuff it. No, nothing from the time I was gone, nothing I can remember. But before that, there were the dreams. The dreams? Yeah, like, I kept on having the same dream before. Like, I'm awake in the dark in my bed, and there's something like a cat or a lizard on the floor by the bed prowling. And sometimes it was this strange figure with dark hair in a white dress standing over me and the darkness is in my eyes and in my throat and I can't breathe and it's... What is wrong with you? Right now I'm out of soy milk. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I used to be but now I'm not like... I, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't be here anymore. I, I have to go. Um, I, I really hope that it passes over you and I hope it doesn't touch your face. Nat, and it's... Um, guys, I'm really sorry. Nat's kind of uh, PTSD about the creepy dreams, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna talk her down. Uh, sorry. Someone's going around kidnapping girls. I can see why they threw those two back. Oh, sorry. Did I mess up your big break there, Laronica Mars? I am going to kill you. That was a real, actual person who had something terrifying happen to her, and all you can do is make crappy jokes. Are you really so damaged that you're incapable of caring about anything? You really think you're doing anything to help that girl? To help poor Betty? At least I'm trying to do something. Oh, are you trying your very best? Because I'm sure if you stay pure of heart and really believe that, that'll make a difference. Well, it's better than lounging around all day and pretending to be all cool and disaffected when really you're just miserable and alone. And do you really think you're doing a lick of actual good? Do you know anything you didn't know the day before she vanished? You're a child, and you understand nothing. Not about life, not about this place, and certainly not about what it takes to survive in a world that... You know what? The sooner you stop playing Lois Lane, the better off you'll be. No. What? No, I'm not just gonna give up. Maybe you're right, maybe I am a child. 
a 19 year old who'd never left her city limits before she got here, who thought that university was gonna be some big adventure full of books to read and parties to dance at, who never thought anything bad could actually happen. Well, turns out the world doesn't work exactly how I thought it was going to. My university is creepy, and parties are full of numbskulls getting hammered, and girls go missing and nobody seems to care, so maybe that's just the way it is, but that does not mean that I have to accept it. I deserve better. Betty deserves better. Hell, even you deserve better. What are you doing? I'm putting my journalism project up online so that all the students at Silas can see it. And if anybody knows anything about Betty or the other missing girls, then they can help. We can do this together. Well, that'll be awfully annoying for the university. And the dean. Well, then she can come and talk to me about it. Well, I think she might. There. It's up. What is that? They've called the town hall. Come on, we're training. We've got five minutes. Run, run! So that was harrowing. They really do not like targeting us here. Sorry for getting all cliffhangery. Sometimes a girl's gotta manufacture her own excitement, you know? So, did Silas's Byzantine bureaucracy finally call a town hall to discuss the fact that girls have gone missing? Nope. Apparently, uploading anything inflammatory to the Silas Ethernet, a word they can't even spell properly, by the way, sets off an immediate security response. Without. Thanks for letting me use your bathroom. Oh, yeah, totally. Sorry about the general level of filth. My roommate's kind of relaxed about hygiene. Oh, no, don't worry about it. So your roommate was the one who was glaring at us in the walk back, right? With all the eyeliner? Hey, so where'd she go? She dematerializes within 20 feet of unwashed dishes. Oh. Hey, are you making another video? Like, eight hot seconds after almost being busted? Uh, yes. It's pretty ballsy, Hollis. Yeah, ballsy, that's me. Besides, LaFontaine thinks she's figured out a way to post them safely and I have got to report on the crazy at the town hall, right? Yeah. Uh, but before I do that, hey everyone, meet Danny Lawrence. Should we? Yeah. Yes, okay. <laughs> Uh, my very awesome English lit TA and VP of Outdoor Rec for the Summer Society, which is an outdoor social club for all girls athletics. Uh, yeah, we host the school's annual Adonis Festival and Hunt. Uh, hi, Laura's audience, it's <laughs> nice to be here. Well, I wouldn't say that I have an audience yet, but it is nice to have you here. Have you here. So, the town hall. <laughs> We're all packed into the auditorium and the dean stands up and holy crap is she six feet of power-suited, middle-aged glamazon and says, <clears throat> It has come to the attention of the university that a certain individual or individuals are circulating rumors about students disappearing. Rest assured, if these disturbances do not cease, the perpetrators will be dealt with. At which point I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get expelled because nobody is saying anything Probably because they're afraid she's gonna suck their souls out through their eyeballs, but then Danny gets up and just... No, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it was. I simply wanted to point out that you shouldn't be calling a missing persons report rumor when one of our own members went missing at a rush party. See? Totally amazing. Amazing as in just like a really brave person who stands up for people who can't stand up for themselves. Like that kind of amazing. Thanks. You know, not that it meant much after the Zetas started in on that safety patrol <laughs> crap. Uh, the Obstreperous Brothers of Zeta Omega Mu have decided it is uncool that hotties might feel unsafe going to parties or making their walks of shame at 4 a.m. and so have decided to personally protect any co-ed 7.5 or higher. Which is just a faux chivalrous way of oppressing the female student body. We should be reinstating our night marches. Uh, completely. 
But when Danny and the Summer Society suggested that, the alchemy department started freaking out because apparently that's going to ruin some mycological transitions. They are such weird little creepers. And then the Zetas piped in with this chant that pretty much sounded like pizza or death. <laughs> yeah. And then some idiots started throwing salted herring into the crowd. <laughs> and then the dean ended the town hall before anybody could actually talk about anything. Ugh. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, no, thought I got them all out. <laughs> the meeting may have sucked, but I'm really glad I ran into you. Yeah, me too. Hey, you know, we should collaborate. Compare notes. You know, figure things out. You can document the investigation for your project here. I think we'd make a pretty great team. Yeah, a team. You and me, absolutely. Cool. Well, I'm going to go get my notes on our missing sister, okay. and I'll see you later. Sure. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, Danny, did you forget something? Hey, little nerd hottie. Uh, hi. Who are you? I'm your designated Zeta Omega Mu safety companion. Kind of like an escort. Only a dude. A dude escort. <laughs> How awesome is that? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, is that fish in your hair? It is very, very nice of you large, large gentlemen to offer to keep me safe, but as you can see, I'm in my room. Snug as a bug in a rug, so you're good to go. Yeah, but what if you want to go somewhere else? I'm sure I'll think of something. You sure you want to take that risk? I mean, this campus isn't really safe for a girl alone at night. Yeah, and we made a vow as Zetas. If there's a hottie, we'll be on her. Sounds chivalrous. Totally. Okay, how about this? If I decide to go wandering down some dark alleyways late at night, you guys will be my first call. Really? Sure. <laughs> Great. But, you know, maybe we should just stick around. You know, just for a little bit. Wouldn't want to let a hottie down. Okay, please stop saying hottie. My name is Laura. I know. You're in my lit class. You helped me the first day with the book about the Baobab guy. And Beowulf? You know, whatever. That's why I picked you special. We can uh, just stick around here for a bit. And seeing as you like British stuff so much, I brought stout. And uh, some tea. And uh, these biscuit things, which I'm pretty sure are just cookies. And you know, hey, Will could go get us a two for Oh, that's really not necessary. And there's even a movie about the Baobab guy. But in this one, uh, he gets it on with the chick from Tomb Raider. What the frilly hell is this? Whoa, <laughs> where are your dude scored, sexy lady? Here, to keep you safe from things that go bump in the night. Get the hell out of here before I feed you each other's spleens. Whoa, angry hottie. Angry, sexy lady. Why did you let these lackwits in? Let? What part of this looks like let? Isn't this exactly what you wanted when you plastered a little plea for help all over the internet? No, and you haven't even seen my videos. Oh no, Maddie's missing. Oh no, Carmilla is mean. Am I close? Spot on, except the girl playing you is kind of a raging bad person. Okay, Laura and Carm, sexy. Babe shouldn't fight. You know, unless there's a kiddie pool full of cream corn somewhere. <laughs> Maybe I just don't enjoy getting hauled in front of the Dean because of your ridiculous project. Okay, truce, truce. A moratorium on the Betty investigation just long enough to get these fine, upstanding young gentlemen stalkers out of our hair, okay? All right, deal. Deal. Yeah, oh, my poor, poor boy. I'm sorry, I have such a terrible temper. Could you possibly forgive me? Yeah, it ain't no thing. <laughs> That tickles. Oh. Wow. Oh, look at these. Such arms, such shoulders. The primitive by way of the neoclassical. Yeah, well, I work out. I could just eat you alive. Oh, oh whoa. Ow, biting, biting, biting. Oh, ow. Oh. Oh. God, what the hell is wrong with you, psycho? Oh, what? Aren't you going to stay and help protect us poor, vulnerable girls? You bit me. Dude. She bit me, that is so not cool. <laughs> what? It was barely a nip. You said you wanted them gone. Gone. Not hemorrhaging. Guess that's it for the truce then. Okay, I'm sorry everybody got dragged in front of the Dean and I'm sorry for the whole town hall fiasco. But I'm not sorry for posting the videos and I'm not gonna stop. It's only a matter of time before you get caught. 
Are you really willing to risk that for a series that has, what, three viewers? What is that? Yeah. I don't think the lack of viewers is gonna be the problem. I can barely believe this. <laughs> I mean, when I put the videos up, I thought there might be a few of you out there who had seen the weird and wanted to help, but the fact that there are so many of you, I mean... I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> We're gonna figure this out. And, of course, when I say we, I mean... Danny and I! We have been working non-stop, and not that we're geniuses or anything, but I think we're really close to a breakthrough. Oh no, I totally think we're geniuses. <gasps> oh, sorry, I just got really nauseous all of a sudden. That's too bad, maybe you should lay down. So she's kind of intense. Yeah, you have no idea. But we're not here to get hung up on my jerk face roommate. You're totally right. Okay. Okay. So, as far as we know, we have four missing girls. All have disappeared at parties. Two have reappeared. And both with no memory of what happened. Exactly. But all the disappearances aren't all the same either. Sarah Jane and Natalie were having those super creepy dreams and we don't know if Betty or... Elsie. Elsie were having them. And nobody else got a weird card or an elbow full of proto shiitake goop. <laughs> yeah. I wish I'd gotten to see that. You really don't actually. So, can we think of anything else that the girls or the parties have in common? And when I think my brain has melted. It's okay. We'll get you some carbs, some caffeine, you know, oh, we'll come in fresh from Lincoln. Oh my gosh, I am a terrible host. I haven't even offered you anything to drink or a snack. Would you like a snack? I, I have peanut butter, grape soda, snack cakes. Oh my God, how are you even alive right now? You know all that stuff is filled with polysyllabic chemicals. I know, but it's also really delicious. And chocolate is comforting in the face of epic failure. It's not epic failure. We have been at this for ages and there is just nothing. Not nothing. Okay, look at this. Okay, all four girls go missing at parties, right? The undersea swim team party, the summer society rush party, the North Quad mixer, the psychology one and cheese. All different events planned by different groups. Yeah, but look at the party gear. Okay, at the, uh, at the swim team party, Small drink cauldron of fizzy daggets. Mm -hmm. At the wine and cheese, a three foot volcanic replica with melted brie. At the summer society, bioluminescent candy bugs. And at the North Quad mixer, party fog. All provided courtesy of the alchemy department. <laughs> wow, the Glee Club is really giving her, huh? So you think someone from the alchemy department is taking girls? It's thin, but it's a start. Watson? Have you even seen those lab rats you're accusing? Most of them couldn't carry off a Twizzler. She's right. Maybe we should talk to Sarah Jane and Natalie again, see if anything jogs their memory. Oh, great. Another visit from Miss Madness and Terror. That'll be a blast. Oh my god, this is so awesome! So are you like gonna put this on TV or something? No. Are you feeling okay? Oh my god, yes! I've never had more fun in my life! Okay, because the last time we talked you were pretty freaked out, you know? About the time that you were missing, oh, yeah, about yeah, the dream. Yeah, 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 right. That was so scary, but I'm so glad that that's over. Hey, do you guys like having coolers? No. no? No? Okay, anybody want to do some table dancing? You? No? You? No. Come on, hot stuff. No. You like to dance. No. 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 Something seriously wrong is happening on this campus. Because of the whole alchemy club sitch, we tried talking to Natalie again. What could just suddenly turn this girl? I, I really hope that it passes over you and I hope it doesn't touch your face. Into this girl. Anybody want to do some table dancing? And it isn't just Natalie who isn't herself either. You're tall. I like you. <laughs> How long has she been like this? Oh, don't get jealous, little nerd. But Laura, you know, just because Sarah Jane stole me away <laughs> from you. <laughs> All right, first, ugh. Secondly, I... Okay, no! Don't be mean to my boo. He's nice, he made me hot chocolate, and he's gonna take me to the party? Next yeah. week. But yeah. yeah. I mean, that's not just kidnapping, that's... I don't even know, it's like they're whole other people. Danny's gone to see what she can figure out about the Alchemy Club guys, but I don't know. 
I mean, I know the Alchemy Club is into some pretty weird stuff, but there's a difference between prehensile cheese and turning coeds into pod people. Natalie was here on a full scholarship. And Sarah, wrinkly-faced Jane, was a freaking pre-med prodigy before that swim team party. I mean, I know Betty was a party animal, but... Holy crap. Betty was, wasn't she? Or what if whatever this is was already happening to her before she was even kidnapped? And what if there's a way to figure out if she was actually... Morning. It's 5 p.m. What are you still doing here? Aren't you usually in the middle of an 18-hour workday? Wait, are you skipping class? I felt sick. Huh. You do look like crap. Well, I've got a talk I want to catch on good to, so I'll be back for Thursday. Try not to get all sweaty and delirious before I get back. Uh, thanks. Well, that was... My Coco. Of course it was. So, after several hours of Facebook stalking, let me reintroduce to you Elizabeth Ann Spielsdorf, high school valedictorian, mayoral page. Whatever was happening was happening before she even disappeared, and I didn't have a clue. God, what the hell is going on here? Lori, you gotta hide quick. What? The Dean. The Dean is coming. Uh, hi, Miss Dean. Can we help you? I'm here to speak with Miss Karnstein. Who? Carmilla. And what kind of thrilling adventure do we find ourselves on now, gentle viewers? Our terrifying Dean of Students has dropped by unannounced and she's reprimanding my awful roommate in the hallway. So naturally, I thought I'd share the fun with you. This is so childish. You think we were still six? Shh, I can almost hear what she's saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I didn't go out of my way to get you accepted here to have you behaving like this. <laughs> Man, she's in trouble. Well, she's as wonderful a student as she is a roommate. Schadenfreude isn't very attractive, Laura, but so satisfying. Oh, uh, if you don't take care of this situation, I will. Then all that's missing is, now straighten up and fly right, young lady. Girls, <clears throat> I know, it's just, she so had it coming. Oh, hi, Miss Dean, sir. You're disapproving this. So lovely to have you visiting the floor, ma'am. Well, as much fun as we've all been having, I'm sure LaFontaine and I have a student crisis to attend to somewhere. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, but before we go, I have some questions for you about you the You can ask her later. But now, Susan... Did you want to talk about it? No. Does a personal chewing out by the Dean of Students that is impressively badass or something? But I so had it coming, didn't I? Look, I didn't mean it like that. Please. You think the Dean is raking me out over the coals because I don't play along with your passive-aggressive tour wheel? No, but... Well, why would she be? I said some things she didn't like. When? In your seminar? God, this age doesn't understand obligation. It's like an undersea anchor impossible to escape. Ah. Worried you aren't uh, living up to expectations, huh? Only child of a massively overprotective dad here. And I didn't even have to get all cool ridgy about it. I returned from the alchemy department victorious. Wait, they are the ones behind it taking the girls? Oh no, more like they're the ones using dander collected at parties to seed an immense interconnected fungus throughout campus. I'm sorry, what now? Apparently it's a communications experiment or maybe a very complicated risotto recipe. I don't know, that's not the victory part. These creepy little proto-scientists have been photo tracking every party on campus for their documentation. 
We have pictures of every party where the girl has disappeared. Yep. And we can track all the girls through all of them. Danny, you are brilliant. I like the sound of that. <clears throat> Sorry, I just forgot that I have to be anywhere but here. Oh, that's too bad. Don't come back. Don't. What? Why not? She's just had kind of a rough day is all. Oh, no, you are entirely too sweet. Yeah, yeah. Come on. We have hundreds of photos to sort through. Well, that is going to be incredibly boring. No, I don't want to see the goldfish. <laughs> hey, Laura. Laura. Laura, you're dreaming. Well, I'm awake. I don't bite my head off or anything. Okay, no, but I think I found something. What? Where? Okay, look, Elsie. The sister who's missing? Mm hmm There she is at the party. And take a look at who's with her. Holy crap. Carmilla. Good evening. Danny had to hit an emergency summer society meeting, so it's just me today. And I know that some of you watching think that we're overreacting, but you've got to admit it looks pretty hinky. The Under the Sea Party. And yes, that is Sarah Jane dancing with a gentleman who apparently thought a shirt didn't go with his seahorse crown. But the interesting thing is about five feet behind them where Carmilla is at a swim team party. This is the psychology wine and cheese. So what the hell is a third year philosophy dilettante doing there? Giving Natalie the stalkeristy stalker eyes ever. And then there is the nail in the proverbial coffin. Carmilla talking to, possibly even arguing with, Elsie. Or as you may remember her, Steady Buddy. I may have no idea what's going on here, but it seems pretty damn clear that my sleeps all day chocolate pinching replacement roommate is up to her ultra thick eyeliner in it. And if she is, well, confronting her has historically been about as effective as using bug spray on Voldemort. Maybe I just don't enjoy getting hauled in front of the dean because of your ridiculous project. Okay. So, do I start not just surveilling her, but actively investigating my own roommate, completely disregarding anything like interpersonal boundaries and essentially stalking her? We started yesterday. And the best part is, she's too lazy to even watch these videos, so I can keep you guys in the loop and she'll never even know. Or if she is watching, then she'll have to confront me. What the? Are you okay? Are they trying to get in? Uh, who are they? The Zetas. They were trying to walk the women's swim team home from the gym, but then one of the girls called us for help. But then someone shoved someone, and now it's turned into this big turf war where we'll protect the gym or the track or who, who knows what else. I didn't know if it made it this far. I had to know that you were okay. Oh, wow, that's... Uh, why are you wearing war paint? Hey, little nerd, Laura, are you in there? Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Laura, Laura, what are you doing? Only her. We're fine. I was really worried about you. Whoa! Ow, 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 Come on, why are the hotties in this room always trying to hurt me? Karma? Uncool, Summer Psycho. Not Mark of Kingsbury rules. That's boxing, dumbass. I can't believe you let him in here. For all you know, he was trying to take this dorm for the Zetas. Hey, we're just trying to protect hot people. The only threat to the girls in this dorm are you and your frat daddy friends. Okay, maybe we should just... That is unfair, okay? Because I'm here out of the, like, bronus of my heart, all right? And I'm not even trying to hook up because I got a girlfriend, all right? So why is everyone so pissed at us? Because we're trying to keep the campus safe. Because safe for you, goons, does not mean safe for everyone else. Okay, no, no, seriously. If you weren't such a hottie, you would be in big, big trouble. <sighs> Bring it, pop collar. Okay, stop it. Stop it, both of you. I get it. You both want to protect the campus. So has it even occurred to you that while you're duking it out, nobody is actually out there protecting anybody at all? But he's the one who started it. He started it? Totally really? Started. Not helping. All I'm saying is that the actually useful thing to do might be to skip the smackdown in the middle of my bedroom and go talk some sense into the idiots setting fire to security carts over who gets to protect people. I knew from the first day of English Lit that you were smart. She's so smart. Yes, she is. And a hottie, that's the And it's time for you to go now. Laura, are you sure you'll be okay? I'm fine. Yourself? Besides, she doesn't know that I know anything. I should be worried about you, turf war and all. Oh, it's mostly just paintballs, some anchovies. I'll talk them down. Okay. Take care. Oh, take care. Really?
Not that my excruciating awkwardness should even be a blip right now. I've got a roommate to surveil. Okay, there was nothing there. Because I left the stupid camera on and I've looked through all the surveillance, there was nothing here. It just seems so real. Like, like that weird moment of clarity during magic hour or the moment right before a car crash. I was in my room and there was something in my bed, something under my bed. This dark, prowling, thing without a face. And then it was this little girl crying. I tried to pull the blankets over my face to hide, but the darkness started seeping through them like blood more and more until I was drowning in it. No, <laughs> damn it, that was a whole update. Apparently delivered to a dead camera. Fine. So, some of you have been kind enough to point out the unholy night terrors that have been ruining my sleep for the past several nights might not be related to my steady diet of frosted filled treats and grape soda and kinda sound like the dreams that Natalie was having right before she got pod peopled. In between that and trying to figure out how Carmilla's involved with the missing girls, I'm kind of freaking out. You're jumpy. <sighs> Worried about your girlfriend making peace with the frat boys? What? No. And Jenny's not my girlfriend, I don't think. Just uh, some squicky dreams from the last few nights. Well, dreams are supposed to be strange. Last night I dreamt I was trapped under a bed. You dreamt you were under a bed? Yeah, above me someone was crying. A little girl in a white nightdress. And then it rained blood down the edges of the bed until I drowned. How creepily specific. But just a dream. No reason for all of this twitchiness. There is no twitching. There is an <laughs> absence of twitching. Clearly. You know, if it's really making you so miserable, I could get you something to help you sleep. That's uncharacteristically considered of you. Yeah, well, I just don't want you losing it and torching all my stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, of course not. <laughs> and yeesh, that has not been easy either. Of course, Carmilla decides to start acting like a halfway decent human being the moment I figure out she's probably kidnapping people. Where's she headed? Philosophy of tyranny in the Robespierre building. Got it covered. No, you don't. This is insane. Because yes, gentle viewers, the roommate surveillance project has been active for the last week and the results are starting to look profoundly WTF. First, of course, are the hours and hours of scientific evidence that she's the worst roommate ever, but her preternatural ability to clog the shower drain with her hair is only the tip of the weird bark. She's nocturnal, she sleeps until four, then vanishes like a puff of antisocial smoke until just before daybreak. She doesn't eat anything besides my chocolate and that protein slurry she keeps in her soy milk container, a diet which I suspect means she should be dead. Not freaktastic enough? That's fine, because here's where we go full on weekly world news. I know Silas has some quirks, but I'm pretty sure spontaneous combustion, super strength, and an all-protein diet weren't options on my roommate form. I mean, we've all seen the pictures of her with the missing girls, and now this? How likely is it that she... Uh, hey! I'm not doing anything! Sure. Your Snape rod effect is still on the screen, Spaz. <laughs> I just came to bring you this. Is that a dried bat wing? Yeah, it's a charm or whatever. To help with the bad dreams. You're annoying, but if you burn out from sleep deprivation, they'll probably replace you with someone even more OCD. The devil you know, you know? Uh, thank you. So, in the spirit of all this newfound closeness, maybe you could tell me where you go all night. Mm. Well, I have to keep some of my secrets. Otherwise, I'll lose my air of mystery, won't I? 
Was that? Was she just flirt? Okay, so if that really was flirting, then there are two options here. One, my immoral jerk face possible kidnapper roommate has a crush on me and is giving me presents. Or two, my immoral jerk face possible kidnapper roommate is pretending to have a crush on me and is giving me gifts because I'm next. <laughs> Hey, we lost her at the shunned house again. I swear I knocked on every stall at the ladies. I'm developing a reputation. Jeez, Frosh, what contaminated your control samples? Oh, you know, I miss my dad. I have papers due. I'm about to be my roommate's next victim. You really think you're in the crosshair? <sighs> I don't know. Even if I am, what am I supposed to do about it? I showed Perry footage of Carmilla lifting like a 400 pound duffel bag and Perry suggested Carm must really be giving it her all at boot camp. Yeah, hair life's normal. She's been that way since we were kids. She used to play monsters, and she would pretend to be the monster's mommy. And wouldn't it be nice if we brushed her monster teeth and did our monster homework? <laughs> we could go over Perry's head. To whom? Well, there's at least one other person we know who has a vested interest in reading Carmilla in. Are you suggesting- That you shower, change into your best cub reporter duds, we crash the faculty club and present your evidence to the dean? The dean? Aren't we supposed to be avoiding her at all costs? Desperate times, desperate measures. Come on, let's get you changed into something with a little less whiff. Are you saying that I smell? I'm saying I don't want the way you smell to affect my credibility with the Dean. <laughs> I've got a couple of theories to run by her about the swim team. You should've never gone out that late. I know. And without telling anyone. I know, we're sorry. We're sorry. For everyone just catching up at home, it's been an... Exciting evening. LaFontaine and I crashed the faculty club. Brilliantly disguised as a young visiting professor and research assistant. Sadly, our cover was blown before we could get to the dean because somebody decided to get into an argument with the head of Gnostic Mathematics about the long-term strategic plan for the Illuminati. It was a chance to raise awareness. But as we were being bodily dragged from the club, I snatched victory from the jaws of total failure by snatching this off the wall. This is the dean's special council meeting in 1954. So. Is that Carmilla's grandmother, great aunt? There's no names on the back of the photo, but there was one way to find out. Oh, sure. You know, tell it like this insane plan that the pair of you hatched was the next logical step. Do you know what this girl did? At 6.48 p.m., these two geniuses decided to hit up the library. Which I admit, in retrospect, was not the most brilliant idea. Thanks. Everything in your fridge is made of glucose and palm oil. I'm surprised you don't have scurvy. I know, but delicious cookies? Everything was fine, at first. As soon as we got there, everyone was leaving the building, and yes, when the sun went down, we started to hear something... And skittering? Yeah, skittering in the stacks, you know, just beyond your periphery. But we made it into the first sub-basement just fine. The online system was really helpful. It gave us a cross-reference list before I even started typing. So we found most of the textbooks before... Uh, before between we realized 19... the staircase wasn't in the same place anymore? Before we realized we might have gotten a little turned around. and that most of the computer monitors we could see were warning us to run, run now. And the skittering was getting closer. Which is when it became apparent that some of the books were, well, airborne, and that the card catalog was attacking us. A copy of Absalom Absalom tried to slice open my left wrist. Ruined Faulkner for me. So we did what any normal person would do if they were caught in a flying vortex of modern literature and, and index cards from the 1970s. We created a flamethrower using a lighter and some mace Laura's dad gave her. Which left us trapped in a flaming vortex. I get a text that says, come quick, stuck in library, bring fire extinguisher. Okay, yes, but it turned out fine. The sprinklers came on and we snuck out a basement window. Oh yeah, with God knows what on your heels. Okay, yes, it was stupid and we're lucky that you didn't have to save our souls. Now, can we please skip to the part where once every 20 years, like clockwork, this girl shows up at Silas. Merkala Karnstein. Arkel McCarstein. Merkala, ugh. Seriously, she just keeps on switching around the letters in her name like nobody's ever heard of an anagram. And every time she does, a bunch of girls go missing. Poof. Vanish. Never seen again. I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but she's nocturnal, she's so strong, she's at least 80 years old, and she drinks blood. Well, yeah, but we know she's a vampire. I mean, we've known that since the blood in the milk container, right? Vampire? Vampire. Vampire, yeah?
You all knew I was living with a vampire and nobody said anything? You really didn't know? I didn't know. I thought you were just playing it cool, you know? Didn't want to seem all speciesist. Speciesist? She's not a vampire. There's no such thing as vampires. She's a light-averse octogenarian with an extreme hemoglobin deficiency and really good skin. I'm gonna go make some more hot chocolate. So, something has taken girls, and the ones that have come back have gone full-on Lucy from Dracula, and you don't think that my roommate being a vampire is, I don't know, pertinent information? Well, when you put it that way... And I'm next. She's making with the, the creepy dreams and the charm. And the seduction eyes. Seduction eyes? I am totally next. Quick, check my neck. Is there anything on my neck? Wait, there's seduction eyes? There's nothing on your neck, Laura. You're fine. Oh my gosh. She's a vampire. My roommate is an honest to Lestat vampire. How do we stop a vampire? Staking. Decapitation, immolation, uh, there's something here about driving an iron needle through her heart. You know, normally I'm not into this kind of stuff, but in the case of seduction eyes, I could definitely warm up to the thought. No! No, 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 We can't immolate everyone that Su La Fontaine thinks is a supernatural creature. Just the ones that are flammable. Because only nut bars make plans to set people on fire without proof of anything. Does Salem ring a bell? We have plenty of proof. Do you want to put some soy milk into my cocoa? I'm feeling a little anemic. No, oh, she's right. Perry. Even if we can turn Carmilla into a vampire bonfire, we still wouldn't be able to figure out what she's done with Betty or the other missing girls. We don't need her dead, or dead-er. We need her trapped. We need a way to get some answers. Okay, so how do we trap a vampire? Well, I have an idea, but you're not gonna like it. What? Well, we use something she wants to lure her into a rope net or a room full of garlic. We'll have to figure out that second part. Okay, so what do you, we use as bait in this case? Well, uh, Laura. Okay, explain to me again how offering yourself as bait to your blood-sucking roommate is not the worst plan ever devised by womankind. You think I'm excited about it? We have been following her for a week and we still have no idea how or where she's taking these girls, and LaFontaine's plan is the only one that we've got. Well, the fact that a terrible plan is our only plan is not really a selling point. I'm sorry, are we still really talking about all of this as though a vampire is really more likely than, I don't know, just some guy putting something in girls' drinks? We don't know she isn't doing that too. You guys know that I can hear you, right? Maybe instead of peanut gallering, you can help me figure out how we trap a vampire? How do we feel about bear spray? Probably not. Side note, you planning on invading a bear sanctuary? My dad's really into personal protection. I can see that. <sighs> this is not working. I don't see how we're gonna do this. Good? Without an army, and I don't have an army in my back pocket, do you? Hey, Laura. Laura's friends. Cycle Society, we came to invite you to the Peace Augsburg's Luau that's happening tomorrow night. Because, you know, peace was, after all, your idea. And, uh, hey, maybe we can talk a bit about the, uh, <laughs> the pod people stuff, because this isn't pre-party uh, drinking anymore. She's been like this all week, which is cool, but, uh, you know, there's only so much top 40 a dude can take. <laughs> yeah, about that. If we were to try to catch the person responsible taking the girls, uh, would the Zetas want in on that? Do you think you know who's behind it? Oh, we totally want in. We're honor bound to pound that guy. Dude, pound that guy? Really? <laughs> and how many of you are there again? I know. I'm betting most of you are about as psyched as Danny that I've enlisted the Zetas for help. They may be jerks, but when you're about to become a live vampire bait, suddenly having an army full of mesomorphs on your side doesn't sound so bad. Which leads us to the even less savory section of our plan. The part where I somehow, who knows how, lure Carmilla into our trap. What would Mina Harker do? Get bitten. Mina Harker would totally try and act all alluring to the blood-sucking fiend and totally get bitten. Let's not do that. Terrible. You're here. Been here a while. Another bad dream? Yeah. What are you doing up? 
I'm looking at the stars. Oh. It's comforting to think how small we are in comparison. All the lives we've led, people we've been, nothing to that light. You are definitely a philosophy major. Right now I think your subconscious is telling you to quit web journalism and finish your overdue lit paper. What? You were dreaming about your Kipling reading. Black as the pit and terrible as the night was Bagheera. I always loved that. It's beautiful. Or, you know, terrifying because a giant black cat. So, there's this party tomorrow night that the Zetas are throwing, and I was thinking since we got off such to a rough start as roommates that we could go together. You know, maybe hang out for a while there. Look at the stars. I think I might like that very much. Okay, so tomorrow then. <laughs> Tomorrow. Behold, vampire bait. Yeah. Danny took one look and said, you look like you're about to flee your brooding lover across the moors, which is accurate. The fluffy sleeve thing's not the brooding lover thing, that's not a thing. So, the plan is to hit the luau, hang for a while, roast some marshmallows, lure Carmela away so that Danny and the Zetas can grab her. Not end up digested in the process. Fingers crossed on that last part. Don't you look like a virgin sacrifice? I'm not the one in a corset, which... Wow. <laughs> also, what is happening there? Well, the more I thought about a bonfire with those lackwits, the less interested I was. Party should be a shimmering moment of possibility. Not a collection of fruits around a piece of flaming driftwood. So, I brought the party here. The party being dancing in the hallway and ludicrously expensive champagne. Where did you even find that? I have my methods. They serve champagne at the first party I ever attended. You say that like it was a hundred years ago. <laughs> Feels like more than that. Like something seen underwater from a great distance. God, I'm a nostalgic idiot tonight. You're not wearing your charm. Oh, yes, it just didn't go with my outfit. Well, you shouldn't have taken it off. It's not gonna work if you're not wearing it. Oh, I'll be sure to tie on my cool bat wing bracelet first thing. <laughs> If you didn't like it, you could have just said something. No, I, I totally liked it. It was really nice of you to think of me. What are you doing? Uh, just texting Danny and the girls, seeing if maybe they want to join. Uh, hey. Maybe I don't feel like sharing you right now. That'd sound more flattering if it didn't make me sound like a canapé. <laughs> God, what am I doing? <laughs> Naive provincial girl. Entirely too tightly wound. Such a cliche. I ought to know better. Gee, thanks. And yet, there's something about you. Maybe it's my keen fashion sense. No, it's definitely not that. You! Vampire captured. Even though I was unable to text for help in an unbelievably lucky series of events, Danny got worried about my crazed plan and came to check on me. Thanks. How's your eye? It's better now that you're safe. Also, I got my head smashed into a table if anyone cares, and I'm pretty sure that Zeta guy, Will, has a fractured clavicle. I can't believe they went back to the party. Bumps and bruises and the dubious legality of holding someone hostage in their own room aside, I think this is cause for a little celebration. Guys, we did it! <laughs> and now that her reign of terror and flirting is over, we'll unpod SJ and Natalie, we'll find Betty and- <coughs>
What was that? We caught her fair and square. There is not allowed to be some new horrible thing. Laura, you gotta come quick. It's SJ and Natalie. I think somebody's trying to take them. I can't find Natalie and I think SJ's... I think she's dead. I don't understand. We caught her. This shouldn't be happening. Natalie shouldn't be missing and Sarah Jane shouldn't be... Well, you're right. These stupid cards were there in both their dorms. And I took a bunch of samples. We'll figure out what the sludge is. It looks like the plan was to take both of them, so maybe what happened to Sarah Jane was an accident. She fell. What? We were all watching the fire from the third floor balcony. And then, and she kept asking me to go to the party, and I kept telling her, babe, we're at the party. And then, and then we, we noticed Natalie went missing, and, and everyone went to look for her. Except SJ, because, well, I was worried about her, so I told her to stay put, and I locked the door, and she should have been safe. Then we heard her scream. And then they must have tried to take her, and then she must have fallen. Hey, why'd you do that to her, huh? What did she ever do what? to you? She wasn't there, because she wasn't there. Thanks, Summer Psycho. I'm gonna, you know, times like these, a dude needs to be with his bros. Oh my gosh, this is such a mess. What are we gonna do now? <coughs> oh, crap. Yeah, that is a dilemma. The stage just keeps getting better and better. Well, don't look at me. I didn't want to kidnap anyone to begin with. We can just let her go. She still might be involved. Also, and I'm just throwing this out there, but it took like eight people to subdue her and she seems kind of angry. Right, definitely not untying angry vampire. You can't just keep a hostage in your dorm room, Laura. I mean, I know this is Silas, but somebody is bound to notice if you keep a girl dressed up in here for God knows how long. You really think that, huh? I could take her to the bio lab. I'm sure there's all sorts of things we could figure out through some minimally invasive probing. <clears throat> or a voluntary questionnaire. We could take her to the Summer Society Department. There's a storage room in the back. No, and... she's our only lead. She stays exactly where she is until she tells us what's going on and how she's involved. If we get caught, you guys can just blame me. The worst thing that they can do is expel me, and by comparison, that's not seeming so dire. It'll seem dire once they start your tribunal. My what now? You really need to read your student handbook. Okay, no, focus. If we're gonna break her, we need to girl the hell up. United front. No mercy. Am I right? Okay. <clears throat> All right, vampire. We know that you've been stalking those girls and we know that you're a vampire. So the sooner you fess up and tell us what's going on, the better this is gonna go for you because we have got a spatula and a stapler and we are not afraid to use them so you better start singing. Uh, Laura, she's still got the- Oh, right. Uh, maybe this will get you talking. So, Bill, how do two more girls end up kidnapped and murdered when we've got you tied up here? Because I didn't do it, you dimwits. You cannot seriously think that we're dumb enough to believe you're innocent just because you say so. Yeah, because that seems like a stretch. Look, if I were really a vampire, would I just stay here tied up proclaiming my innocence as some sort of trick? Yeah, that's completely exactly what a vampire would do. We have like 40 hours of video documentation. Bet you wish you'd watched my project now, huh? Fine. So I'm a vampire. But I couldn't have made off with either of the two cupcakes because I was here with you, and then I was here being ambushed by toddlers the whole time. Well, maybe you have some kind of vampiric accomplice. Do I strike you as the type of person who plays well with others? Well, if you weren't snacking on co-eds, what were you doing following them around at parties? I'm a popular girl. I get a lot of invitations. Not everyone has to resort to Bush League investigative journalism to get their kicks. You're a vampire! Yeah, but not a kidnapper. She's got us there, assuming she's up to something diabolical just because she's... An undead fiend from the pits of hell? I'm from Eastern Europe. Potato, potato. Oh, hey, yeah, we're actually good for beer shots right now, but thanks for thinking of us. What? No, uh, we're rehearsing a skit. Uh, yeah, the torture scene from Arsenic and Old Lace. Mm -hmm. Yep, there's a torture scene. Want more info? Buy tickets. Oh, 
Okay, as much as I appreciate that we have this whole hysterical vampire thing going on, I think it's time that we just de-escalate. De-escalate? She just admitted to being a vampire. I know, and that's insane. So maybe she's just insane, and instead of holding her here hostage, we should take her to student health services. I hear they have a great collection of straight jackets and tranquilizers. Well, what other option do we have? Keep your hair tied up, watching her every second? Starving her until she confesses? Good morning, viewers, and welcome to day nine of Operation Stupid Obstinate Vampire Roommate Won't Talk, which is all she has to do, and we will totally give her this nice, yummy blood to drink. Ugh, I swear! Uh, hey! No, no, Carmilla's not here right now. Uh, she had tickets to some angry existentialist punk rock fight club thing. <laughs> you know how she is. Yeah, I'm sure she's totally gonna text you when she gets back. Okay, bye. I swear if one more of your broken-hearted study buddies comes knocking at the door, I'm gonna start spritzing them like cats. Carmilla, no, 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 <laughs> please don't die. Please don't die, you stupid vampire. Here, look, I've got blood. Uh, oh, thank God. Damn it. Do you want some more? Fine. Where'd you get that? Uh, we figured we might need some leverage, so LaFontaine got it from the campus hospital. She told him it was for an experiment about hemophagy. You got a little something right. What? experience of being held captive by a clutch of imbeciles for something I didn't even have the pleasure of doing. It's humiliating enough without having you wipe me up like a dribbling child. Look, if you really want me to believe that you didn't do it, you have got to explain what you were doing at those parties. Because the night that we caught you, it sure looked like you were about to eat me. Wait, you thought that was me trying to eat you? Well, if you weren't trying to eat me, then what were you trying to... Oh. Oh. So when you were hitting on me, you were really hitting on me? Yes, and you were luring me into a trap. Could you just stake me now? Because I think that would be less mortifying than this conversation. Wow, that is... Okay, even if I was to believe you, that still doesn't explain what you were doing at the parties and how you know all the missing girls. If you want us to trust you, you have got to tell us your side of the story. My side of the story? All right then, buckle up, cream puff. We're gonna be in for a long night. Or you know, Wednesday afternoon. This need of yours to document everything borders the pathological. Think of it as being for posterity. Posterity doesn't care. I should know, I live in it. All right, well, this is your chance. Tell us your story. Convince me and the folks at home that you didn't <sighs> guzzle Betty like a slurpee. I was born Mercalla daughter of the Count Karnstein in Styria, a duchy of Austria in 1680. Austria was embroiled in the Great War against the Ottoman Empire, but such things meant little to a wealthy girl. When I was 18, I attended a ball where I was murdered. Murdered? Whoa! You can't tell it like that, like some boring history lesson. This is dangerous. This is exciting. This is flashback material. I know exactly what we need. You don't think perhaps this makes light of my tragic backstory? Oh, get over yourself, come on. Okay, so you were murdered at a ball. La 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 la. Oh, how I love dancing. Oh, how I love balls. Oh, how I love to eat you. Hum nom 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 nom. Oh, oh, I die, I die. Cruel fate that's to blast the blossom of my youth. Okay, what happened next? Mother raised me. Mother? Not my birth mother, but the mother I knew after death. I knew nothing of her except she was very old and very wise and had pried apart the jaws of death to enact my rescue. Arise, arise! Uh, oh, get up, you lazy thing! Now I'm a creature of the night. I can sleep until noon every day. Yeah! The wide world did open before me in death as it had never been in life. We danced in the mirrored halls of Versailles. We watched the stars whirl overseas no man had named. We saw the birth of a new world and 
science and philosophy and revolution. Every night was a grand ball, a hunt, a feast. But every 20 years we'd return here and perform a strange ritual. Mother would uh, arrange for me to meet a young girl. I'd be abandoned at a ball or there'd be a carriage wreck and some kind stranger and his ward, like a niece or a daughter, would be gallant enough to take me in. Pretty soon she and I would become fast friends. Inseparable. But of course my new friend would fall ill. I think he recognized the symptoms. Strange behavior, weakness of the mind. And before long it would be time for me to rejoin my mother in search of my next friend. Uh, yo, liquid diet, you aren't exactly making a case for us not being a kidnapper here. I, I was never an abductor, I was a lure. And that's how I met Elle. It was 1872. The Metropolitan Museum of Art had just opened in New York, and I wanted more than anything to sail to see it. But my mom insisted. The game started off the same. Carriage wreck, promise of shelter, fast friendship. Only this time nothing was a lie. I heart you so much. No, I heart you so much. When the time came to take Elle to my mother, I, I couldn't bear to give her up. So I planned our escape and went ahead to make preparations. Come away with me and the world shall turn only for us. But um, when the time came for Elle to meet me, disaster struck. I had taken great lengths to hide what I was from her, but Mama went to her in secret and revealed my true nature in the most horrifying light. Elle believed me to be a monster and led Mama to where I waited. And so my the price for the disobedience was to watch Elle be taken away to some certain doom and to be sealed in a coffin of blood that I may waste away my long centuries in the dark. For decades I rotted under the earth. And then the war came. The last great war of the modern world that rent the earth with tanks and mines and bombs. So my punishment came to an end and I walked off the battlefield in Austria to greet the 20th century. My mom found me in Paris in the 1950s and didn't have the heart to reinter me. I was of more use here where the details had changed but the game had not. I was to meet girls and make friends and see to it that the blossoms were ready to be plucked when my mom decided. So you went right back to abducting girls? No, I pretended to go along. I had no choice, but I ruined opportunities where I could. I sent girls fleeing back to the safety of mothers and fathers and fallback schools. There can be great satisfaction in small revenges. And I never knew what use Mama had for the girls. It was always a secret she'd kept from me, but I could afford to bide my time, so I watched and I waited until I had learned what I had truly been a part of all along. But I had betrayed L2 before she betrayed me. All too tragic for sock puppets. So you've been helping girls escape? When I can. Did you help Betty? No. So. Someone that she knew, someone that she thought was her friend, was really a vampire. And they took her for your mother. Yes. Okay, so, we find your mother and we get our friends back. <laughs> What's so funny? We caught you. Yeah, and as humiliating as that was, it doesn't change the fact that my mom will scoop out your eyeballs and serve them in martinis. You're already terrified of her. Already? What do you mean already? I've never met your mom. Yeah, of course you have. She's the dean.
So, in light of last night's many revelations, we are gathering to debate the benefits of releasing our vampire hostage, right? Oh my god, Laura, I don't care how soppy her tale of long lost love is. She just confessed to centuries of tricking girls into being her friend before she ate them. Fine, but if her mother really is the Dean, then don't we need all the help that we can get? It's not help if we can't trust a word she says. Sorry, I'll not on board with untying someone who may eat me. Perry? You didn't even want to trap her in the first place. Have you been listening to what she's been saying? We kidnapped the Dean's daughter. We can't just let her go now. Sorry, Carmilla. Oh, don't worry about me. If you guys want to go after my mother, I'm fine here. Vampires don't cry? It's almost as bad as that sparkly twerp. Yeah. Clearly we're lost without her. Fine. But what are we going to do about the Dean? You're a vampire, numbnuts. Eat her. Pop culture has so much to answer for. Well, this is pathetic. Mother sent me to see if you dealt with your roommate problem yet, and I see that the answer is no. That's some big talk, fresh meat. This fresh meat took you down, kitty. I remember. How's that collarbone feeling? Ah, lucky shot. <laughs> Untie me and we'll find out. That is what you're here for, isn't it? Yes. Mother says it's time to stop screwing around. And we're stalling. We're gonna grab your prissy little roomie and we're- Carl, can you please remount the television? This is not good, Will. You need to run right now. Oh my god, now. really? Why? Because I know that we didn't really talk about this when you were helping us catch her, but she's a vampire. I know. She's kind of not the only one. Cool. Okay. Cool. So, with that information, I'm just gonna go... I am really gonna enjoy this. <laughs> <gasps> okay, ow, what the hell was that? Uh, my father is a raging paranoid. You think he sends me Day of the Week bear spray but didn't sign me up for Krav Maga at age eight? Cute. Not gonna save you. See, this is why I miss the 1930s. You know, I'm sure you get the occasional gal who signs up for the ROTC, but you don't get any of this chop socky crap. Oh, yeah, victims who fight back are so inconvenient. Oh, uh, laugh it up, Kitty. I'm sure Mother's gonna find it hilarious. I had to cut you loose and finish you? your chores. You are such a mama's boy. We'll just have a little snack now. We don't kill the targets. <laughs> and I bet you're already in deep for losing the airhead. Well, it was an accident. I mean, how was I supposed to know that they were gonna lock her in upstairs bedroom oh, with a window wide open? Now you wanna open. be the guy who lost two of them? It'd be worth it just to screw with you. <laughs> you're gonna regret that, Kitty. Thank you for not letting him eat me. Which is especially nice of <laughs> Not dead. Oh my god, my dad is gonna kill me. <gasps> okay, seriously? What? Uh, this? You're not dead. That's it? You just use me as a human juice box and I don't even get an explanation? <sighs> I'm a vampire and I'm pissed off. What were you expecting? I needed the strength to catch Willy Boy before he ran off to Mother and ratted me out. So did you? Uh, yeah, I'm preparing to flee the scene because everything went to spec. The little weasel got away. It's only a matter of time before mother comes after me. So you're just gonna run? Have you been listening to a word that I've said about my mother? Yeah. And as soon as you leave, they're just gonna come for me? Well, you know what? You never really had much of a chance anyway. Sorry, cutie. Nothing personal. But it is. It's totally personal. Will was gonna kill me just to piss you off so you decked him. It's his word against yours that you're being all disobedient. Running, though, That'll make you look guilty for sure. 
So coincidentally, my best chance is to stay here and figure out a way to justify protecting you. Funny the way things work out, huh? Fine. But only because I have nothing resembling a better plan. And don't think that I'm not pissed off. I haven't forgotten about the past two weeks. You have been lying to me since the moment that we met. And you just bit me. I'm pissed too. Fine. I'm gonna take a shower. I smell like the basement of an abattoir. Terrific! See if you can scrape all your hair out of the shower drain while you're at it. Fine! Fine! <sighs> oh. Holy crap. So, a pack of vampires wants to kidnap me for reasons unknown, and the only thing maybe stopping them is my quite possibly not as evil as they are roommate, who just bit me. So that's not complicated. <laughs> also, I have a lit midterm in five hours. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I just failed my first test ever in my life. And yes, I know that college isn't as easy as high school, and my attention has probably been wandering due to living with a vampire, but still, I just feel dirty. Ugh, what are you wanting about now? Nothing. I think I failed my lit midterm. Big deal. Aren't you practically dating your TA? I mean, ask Danny to... No, I couldn't do that. An A is a sacred trust. Fine. But if I was their TA, you wouldn't even have to ask. That's unethical. Considerate, but unethical. Ethics are a ridiculous game, played by children who think they can impose order on an arbitrary universe. Yeah, but what can you do but try? Well, if you're smart, you take any advantage you can get. Speaking of which, where's that bracelet I gave you? So what does it do exactly? It makes you feel off to vampires. Like you're leaking radiation. Like, if I touched you, I might feel off. Oh. Well, that's good. That's probably good. Well, I might persuade them to move on to someone else. Speaking of which, have you heard anything from the Dean yet? Radio silence. But the fact that we're both not messily dead bodes well. I see, seriously, Nick, if you can't even remember to keep the cage locked? Um, at what point in the last century did people give up on knocking? Laura, the vampire's loose. Why is the vampire loose? Okay, help. No, Perry, uh... Why would you let her go? I didn't. It was beyond my control, but she really is on our side. How do I know she hasn't pod personed you, that you're not just spouting the vampire company line? <sighs> it doesn't work that way. Yeah, completely plausible coming from you. Do you want proof? You are literally the worst roommate ever. You have been untied all of eight hours and there's already sludge in every surface of the bathroom. And you just stole my pillow! Good enough? For now. Mm. You said that's not how it works, so how does it work? What happens to the girls you take? I don't know. But whatever happens to them happens after I take them to my mother. Wait, you've been taking girls for how many hundreds of years and you don't even know what happens to them? Um, gee, Mom, feel like telling me the secrets of your antediluvian vampire call today? Oh, what's that, no? Oh, okay, and you'll use my head as a doorstop if I continue asking questions. Whatever happens to them, it makes their blood undrinkable. If it's changing their blood chemistry, maybe it's physically affecting their brains as well. We really need to figure out what that goo we've been finding in their rooms is. See, look, you're helping already. Now we just have to get Betty and the other girls back. Have I been stuttering when I've been talking about my mother? There's no getting them back. They're just staying out of my mother's way. You've been saving girls. No, I've just been screwing with mummy dearest minions to annoy her. So after everything that she's done to you, to Elle, your big revenge is to be annoying. Aren't you some centuries old badass? Yeah, and you know how you get to be centuries old? You pick your battles. My mother is an ancient supernatural being with the personal cabal of the undead. You are an annoying teenager whose only real skill is being nosy. But you're not. You're some super fast, super strong vampire! Yeah, and you've got a better chance of taking me down than I've ever had against my mother. You feel like taking a shot? See? She's loose! I told you she was loose! You! Me! Right now! I won't let you hurt her. Not to ruin your big heroic entrance, Zena, but she's not the one in trouble. If you think that I can't get up... 
I have been doing my very best to be patient about the ambush and the hostage taking and the starvation diet, but I am having difficulty remembering why it is that I haven't torn out your spine. No, don't, please don't, Carmilla. Look, Danny's sorry and she's not gonna try and kill you again, right? Danny? Look, she's nodding. That's a nod. <sighs> Are you okay? I'm fine. I was just, I was scared for you. I know, but look, I've got everything under control. Under control? Laura, you think this is under control? In the past two weeks, you've broken into the faculty club, you've almost gotten killed at the library, you have offered yourself up as vampire bait, and, and now she's lucid, and you have a bite on your neck. Okay, there were perfectly reasonable reasons for all of that. Oh, could you stop playing in the cheap seats for all of five seconds? Okay, so this is none of our business, so we're just gonna go. Um, Carmilla? Oh, no, I'm good. The filming that I do, it is part of something important. And I'm not saying it's not, it's just... You have to call me before you're- I have you're to, to call you? Because it's like your job to keep me safe? Yes! What? I care about you, of course it's my job to keep you safe! Well, I'm sorry that my making my own decisions and being reckless is making it hard for you to do your job. I didn't mean it yes, like that! Yes, you did! You meant that Laura's too dumb to know what she can and can't handle and needs to be protected by the big, strong grown-ups. That's all anyone ever wants to say to me. My dad, the Zetas, you. Everyone. Look, Laura- I like you. I really do. I like that you're brave and strong and all kinds of righteous, but I don't need a dad. I've already got that one covered. Is this because of you and... No! And no! This is just me and you needing different things, you know? Okay, fine. I'll, I'll back off. Hey, dead girl. If anything happens to her, I'm coming back here with that steak, got it? I'll hold my breath. And just be careful, okay? So, I guess I'll see you in class. Yeah, about that, I... What? Nothing, it's not important, just a dumb question about my midterm. Smooth, Sundance, smooth. You suck. Hmm. What the? Are those giant mushrooms? God, I hate this place. So, it was kind of a long night last night. Seems the Alchemy Club lost control of this giant underground fungus. Idiots. And these huge mushrooms popped up and started shooting spores at people, and anyone who inhaled them kind of started lurching around like a zombie. Actually, that part was pretty funny. Right up to the moment they tried to burn down the Lustig Theater building. Yeah, it's still pretty funny. And tried to attack anyone who stopped them. Yeah, it's not like Okay, a you can mm -hmm. stop pretending okay. to be all callous and indifferent. They saw you save me. I was just saving myself from the spores. Sure you were. Anyway, those of us who, for whatever reason, didn't get a face full of mushroom dust spent the evening hacking apart six-foot toadstools and rolling barrels of fungicide into the basement of any building within a half mile of the Lustig, which, side note, what is it with people trying to burn that place down? Didn't they already torch it back in 1904? Well, nobody likes theater students. Some crazy cooking club prank. My hair still smells like burning portobellos. Hey, Perry, I don't think that those Don't bother. She's trying to convince herself Day of the Triffids out there has something to do with the calf greenhouse getting out of control. Well, that is not beyond the realm of <sighs> giant mushrooms. Did you see Danny out there? I mean, good thing she was on our side, because that was violent. Yeah, I don't think she's taking our thing from yesterday very well. Yeah, I'd steer clear of her for a little while, especially if she's armed. Um, not to be inhospitable, but why the hell are you two here? The test results came back for the fluid we found in Sarah Jane and Natalie's room. And? But maybe some kind of um, cyclical natural thing like a, like a jellyfish So flu. it was cerebrospinal fluid. Is that what I think it is? It's the fluid in your brain sac. So I stuck my hand in a puddle of Betty's brain fluid. Oh, oh it gets better than that. <sighs> and what exactly is your idea of better? I looked at it through our electron microscope and I found these. 
chopsticks, what are those? I think it's some kind of parasite. Don't look at me, I don't know anything about parasites. Uh, I'm a vampire, not a guinea worm. Okay, but this could be what makes Betty and the other girls started acting so crazy. I mean, parasites do that, right? Like the thing in the Amazon that makes ants climb up trees before it kills them. Exactly, or that protozoa that makes you like cats. Is there something you make them drink or something injected or inhaled? No. Whatever's happening to them happens after my mother takes them. Think carefully. There has to be something. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's just dissect my deeply painful past in excruciating oh, detail. What? I don't want to make her uncomfortable, but... <sighs> First hand witness, hello. I know, it's just, she kind of lost someone a while ago and I think talking about it makes her sad or guilty or... And those are things that a human might feel, so she's probably gonna go scour herself with a lie or eat somebody. You don't think she'd eat somebody? Uh, yeah, crushes on vampires. What? I don't, I just, I feel sorry for her is all. The way that her mom treats her, it's no wonder she has baggage. Well, I want to figure this out before her baggage crushes us, so... Minion vamps take girls, they infect them with the brain parasites, hence pod people, and then they kidnap them again. Why? What if they don't? What? Parasites have life cycles, right? So what if the girls disappearing a second time isn't the vampires at all? What if it's like the next stage of the parasite? What if it's something that we've never even seen before no. at all? No, 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 no. The, that is, these are not things that happen. Vampires and evil, weird brain parasites and giant mushrooms? No. We're supposed to have a, a movie night and a, a formal dance at the end of term, and you will come to me with boy problems or girl problems or menstrual problems, but not all of this evil, weird conspiracy. No, this, this needs to stop happening. I demand that this stops happening. Just be normal. Just be normal! Gee, Pear, tell us how you really feel. Look, I get that this is all big fun for you, Susan, but you can't just expect everyone to go along with all of this insanity. Like it or not, Pear, weird is the way it is. That doesn't mean you need to fling yourself into every weird situation you can find head first. Like this nonsense where you won't even let me call you Susan anymore. I don't want to be Susan anymore. Well, that's too bad because she was my friend. I don't even know who you are anymore. Are you okay? Peachy. Best friend since I was five thinks I'm some sort of freak. I'd like to find something to experiment on now. Yeah, or maybe just for tonight we stuff our faces with popcorn and watch bad sci-fi because I have been marked for death by a vampire cabal and you are fighting with your best friend. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, I can't. What the hell? Hey, 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 Laura, Laura, Laura. Laura, Laura, you're dreaming. It was just a dream. Hey. Blood. There was blood everywhere again. It filled the room until it was an ocean, and, and above it, this light. Nothing should shine like that, like the rotted heart of the world. So that's not creepy. Do you think these are still the dreams that mean she's been chosen? She shouldn't be having these dreams anymore. The charm should have chased the vampires away. I, I don't think it's a vampire. It's the girl. The girl in the nightdress. You saw her? I think so. She was in the room as the blood rose. She didn't even try and swim. Why didn't she try and swim? Did she say anything? No. Maybe. Maybe not to go into the light, because the light is hungry. Awesome, I didn't need to sleep again ever. That's everything she said. Yeah, I'm sorry. You asked about her before. It's her, isn't it? It's Elle. I don't know. I've never seen her. The girls we take talk about her sometimes. Little girl with a mole right here. But she's never tried to say anything to me. Who are we talking about now? Her ex, kind of. She got taken a long time ago. Maybe she can't get to you. Maybe it's like a non-vampire thing. Sure. Well, the light is hungry. Not to get all fascinated by weird things, but maybe it's a clue. Maybe it has something to do with the second stage of the parasite. Could be, but 
How are we gonna cross-reference some ancient evil light with weird parasitic brain worms and... Oh no. How did you idiots ever trap me? Just in case we don't come back, we are recording this message. We've determined that a research trip, which some of you may not approve of, is a necessity. And since uh, the sub-basements where the archives are housed only exists after dark, a day trip was out of the question. So, if you're watching this, Danny, Perry... Oh, hell no. We are not apologizing to them. We are ready for the weird. We thrive on it. We tape our flamethrowers to our pulse rifles, and we make the weird submit. We're going to the library. So we survived the research trip, which we should probably never speak of again. And here is our haul. One gnarly Sumerian book from before time began and... The rescued digital consciousness of one J.P. Armitaz, junior records clerk and Silas student, class of 1874. Say hi to the internet, J.P. Because somebody really did get absorbed into the library catalog. Although how he got sucked in like a hundred years before the catalog was digitized? We really need to find you a better interface. Anyway, turns out JP has helped us before. Remember the truly stellar search results and timely warnings for us to flee from our last trip to the library? All courtesy of JP. According to JP, there was a rash of disappearances in 1874 as well. And although he didn't have an electron microscope to suss out the brain parasites, he did get way further along than we did with his research into the Lucha Eserintem, or the Hungry Light and the cult of vampires serving it, AKA the Dean's special counsel. He'd even found reference to this giant Sumerian tome uh, that's supposed to have a section on it, which is what he was searching for in the sub-basement when he got absorbed. Well, Wonder Librarian better have more than just hungry and eat squirrels because that pretty much describes everything in this book. No, but there's gotta be something. Mm -hmm. No, Yogoth. raised with 12 virgins, burned, burned at the stake, um, Kalos. Sprinkled with the blood of virgins, smeared on the roots of this sacrificial tree. Nyar Logoth prefers the livers of virgins for fed nothing but red wine for 96 days. Ugh. 13 year old boys have so much more subtlety. Yeah, that's the problem with the existence of horrors from beyond the dawn of time, their lack of subtlety. Though it is pretty cool you can read Sumerian. Nah, 1871 was a dull year. I decided to read Gilgamesh. Oh, good. You're all still here. Um, because I saw Laura's last video about going to the library, and I thought I'd just check to make sure you weren't dead, and you're not. So that's fine. She'll come around, you'll see, because you're awesome. And we would literally be nowhere without you. You know that, right? Thanks. Come on, JP. Let's you and I hit my homunculate anatomy course and see if we can't figure out anything about these parasites. Great. And we will keep reading the giant Sumerian tome of Do Not Want. So, thanks, by the way, for coming with us to the library. I thought we were never speaking of that again. Yeah. <laughs> you came along because you want to know what happened to her, didn't you? Because you're hoping that you can save her somehow? Don't start expecting heroic vampire crap from me, Cupcake. If I know better than to mess with my mother, I sure as hell know better than to spit in the eye of something old enough to think it's a god. Besides, the wench is dead. So are you. Doesn't seem to be putting a dent in your social life. Besides, if you want me to stop having heroic notions about you, you should probably stop saving my life. Then who would buy the cupcakes? <sighs> there is just nothing like a good night's sleep. Right, sleepyhead? No. I mean, I did dream about that weird black cat thing again, but I think that's just my subconscious being weird. This morning, after a long night of fruitless research, it is more fruitless research. This time for my final lit paper on which I am woefully behind. If anyone had told me before college that fighting evil required this much paperwork, I would not have believed them. Where is she? Because she thinks this is some kind of joke that she's trying to teach me a lesson. 
It is in such incredibly bad taste. Where is who now? Susan. Uh, La Fontaine. And I know that she's mad at me, but that is just no excuse for all this. La Fontaine isn't here. What? No. No, she has to be. It has to be a joke. What has to be a joke? Her room is a mess, and this was stapled to the door. Dear student, your nosy little friend no longer attends Silas University because A. She meddled in things that were none of her business. B. Did you really think we wouldn't find out what you were up to? C. We are ancient and terrible. D. None of you are safe. We'll take anyone we want. Exit procedures have commenced. No action on your part is required. They could have taken her anywhere. They could be doing anything. Sure. But any money laughs with the other missing girls. They're down by two and they need to make up numbers. Uh, wh what do you mean down by two? Well, they already lost Sarah Jane and I stopped them from taking Laura here. So, so you mean that because you protected Laura they needed a replacement and so they took and you just yeah. let them? Why wouldn't you have given her a bracelet too? Why wouldn't you have warned somebody? Because whoever I helped, they just end up taking more. I didn't think it would be one of your friends. I told you I'm not the hero of this piece. What were you thinking, the two of you? Getting involved in all of this and putting everything you do up online? For everyone to see? Oh God, what if they're putting those things in her brain? What, what if the last thing she remembers is that I was awful to her? I did this. They took LaFontaine because they couldn't take me. Because they could see my videos right. and they knew what we okay. were up to. Just stop all of this before I get queasy. Cupcake, you are ridiculous and headstrong and naive and this whole Lois Lane Jr. gig is doomed. Okay? But unless you're going around kidnapping girls for some ancient unspeakable evil, nothing that's happening right now is your fault. Really? Yeah, former minion of the evil? Yeah. Okay, but Perry's not wrong either. We need to be smarter than this. We need to make sure that we've warned anybody who might be in harm's way. Which includes you. If you are on the Silas campus, you are in danger. Duh. Though, did anyone think to tell that big puppy that follows you around that his BFF's a vampire? Oh my god, Kirsch! No. Yes. No. Yes. Dude, no, okay? Will's my bro. He came with me to SJ's memorial, which was really sad. Kirsch, I'm sorry. The memorial's nice, though. There's like a little rock with her name on it. Yeah, I bring her flowers sometimes. Pink ones. <laughs> she likes pink stuff. That's sweet. And look, I get it. You guys are trying to help me because you think I'm dumb. No. All right? You think I'm not good at math or science or English or whatever, but I know bros. And Zetas, we walk through fire for each other. And even if Will is a vampire, he's a Zeta first. Doesn't work that way, Beefcake. Well, listen, out of the two of you, my man Will never tried to bite me. Just do me a favor, okay? Just be careful around him. I was not kidding when I said he tried to kill me. Okay, yeah. And hey, if you're not too busy fighting evil, maybe you would come to the post midterm bash on Friday? We're wrapping the goat and bacon this year. Yum. You can send a dude to college, but you can't make him think. It must be nice sometimes, though, to be normal or oblivious. Nothing to worry about except the midterm bash and whether the person you like is going to be there. That must sound so stupid to you. You've been to, what, a zillion dances? Yeah, but most of the time I was bait in a supernatural con game. So you can't remember what kids did for kicks back in 1698? Ah, uh, it wasn't much different. We drank a lot and danced like fools. Waltzing was fun. It had a three-zone scandal back then. How is waltzing scandalous? Well... <laughs> Partners were face to face, chest to chest. All of that, um, whirling. <laughs> in 1698, it may as well have been sex. So you had some fun after all. 
Uh, once or twice. Why don't you just take mine? I'll curl up on the floor. No, I couldn't make you... <laughs> Vampire constitution trumps lower back pain. Thanks. Worst crush ever. Good morning, Laura's viewers. So, as some of you are probably aware, um, my best friend has um, been kidnapped and um, there's really absolutely nothing that any of us can do about it. But instead of sitting around and panicking, I decided to make myself useful. There was a lot to clean, so that's done. Oh, I should go check on the brownies. Good morning, Laura. It's 6 a.m. I know, but I ran out of things to clean, so I thought it was time we had a little talk. Brownie? Ah, uh, thanks. Sorry, I keep dreaming there's this giant cat thing sleeping on the floor. Oh, that's probably just Carmilla. Carmilla! Carmilla! Uh, what? You want a brownie? Seriously? I was just getting to sleep. Did you vacuum around me? Okay, so now that you're both awake, I think it's time that we had a floor meeting. So we're in hell now. Seems so. Brownies are good. The two of you can be flip all you like, but the fact remains that LaFontaine is missing, and we need to start doing something about it right now. So, first. I think we need to put this thing on some kind of delay so that we aren't just giving ourselves away if something evil is watching. Second, are we calling the police? Possibly hiring a private investigator. Mercenaries, bloodthirsty killers for hire, we can do that, right? We went over all this with Betty. The police won't come unless campus security calls them and no private investigator will even set foot on this campus, which really is an indication. And I don't even know how you go about finding mercenaries. But we'll hit the book. There's supposed to be something in there. In the meantime, I think I saw some mold behind the toilet, so you can... On it. And now for our daring daylight escape? And now for hitting the book. She might be traumatized, but she isn't wrong. Ah, oh, God damn it. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't... Is that I... new stuff appearing on the book because you spilled blood on it? Right, of course it is. It's an entry from something called La Filformes, the light that devours, an ancient evil that demands... I'm not sure about the symbol there. Five... Chalker virgins every 20 years. Uh, once victims are marked, their world narrows to celebration. It likes party girls. That's it. That's our thing. So how do we stop it? Uh, old as the ocean's depths, the light that betrays all, blah, 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 draws the devoured to it and consumes their minds, which increases the light and draws in more of the devoured. So it's absorbing their minds and using the energy to draw more people in. And if Elle is reaching out to us, then... They're conscious in there. God, this just gets creepier and creepier. Word. Hey, why are we all freaking out? Oh, you're back. You're back. You're all right. <laughs> what do you mean I'm back? I didn't go anywhere. Did I go somewhere? There's just nothing. I remember being here, talking to you, and then I was in that corner. Like, no time had passed. Well, it was more than just a day. We didn't think you'd come back. That other girl, Elsie, she didn't come back. They really took me. If they did, those things are in my brain. How long do I have? Great. So, what do we know? Please tell me you didn't waste an entire day making brownies. No, no, we found it. It's this devouring light thing called Lupiformis. Lupiformis. And it looks like the Dean sacrifices five girls to it every 20 years. Wow, so much for the university's progressive policies on feminism, huh? <laughs> so, uh, why would the Dean do that? Well, why does anyone start a cult? Wealth, power, eternal youth, to get back at people you knew in high school. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything in the book that might 
No, it's just, it's more in the all hail and cower mewling worms vein. Okay, so maybe we don't have to go with the book, but ancient evil brain parasites, yes. So maybe they don't like um, mm. aspirin or cough syrup. Alfonso's almost dead. What's this? I didn't see anything when they took me, but now I'm in this little room. It's dark and it smells like limestone and water, like a cave. I don't know what she's bitching about. I'm mean, fine. The third one went so fast, we need to collect her again. This one replaced the airhead. So we just need to score one more for the ritual for the new man. Do the cake. Oh, damn it. This one's fainted. Did you forget to water them again? Good news, smarty pants. The dean will see you now. Oh, that's okay. I know she's busy. Did you record your own kidnapping? Maybe. Incompetent idiots. No, not you guys, my mother's minions. Who lets a kidnapping victim get in with a recording device? That's just... Uh, um, by which I mean... Um, well done, you. You did amazing. They have three girls down there, and they're all still alive. Yeah, but we still don't know where there is, or how to deal with my mother, let alone some ancient unspeakable evil. So we're still utterly screwed. But there's a ritual, right? So maybe we just need to stop them from taking any more girls until, mm. what did Will say, the new moon. We just have to last until Friday. Which is also when my lit paper is due. Well, hey, if we get sucked into an underground evil, your deadline will be moot. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, I gotta say, all things considered, you're taking this really well. Yeah, it really doesn't seem to be that scary. It's probably a bad sign, right? Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, you, you can't be going yet. Oh, the others, they didn't go this fast. Maybe it's because the ritual is so close. That might have the little wormy dudes in my brain right up. <gasps> Snacks. That won't be distracting. <sighs> um, it's okay. I'll, I'll stay with her and make sure she's okay. She's my best friend. Okay, come on, honey. Let's go. We'll, uh, we'll find you some place to go dancing. Uh. Ooh, I am starting to miss having Perry around. Carmilla and JP researching mystical weapons on campus, of which there are an alarming number actually, I have decided it is time to tackle my scholastic progress, or lack thereof, by having a little conversation with my... Hey, Laura. Uh, Perry said you needed to talk to me? My lit TA. Hey, Danny. You look good. Thanks. And you're still filming, even after what happened to La Fontaine. Oh, God, are you still watching? Oh, no, no. Uh, not after the library. I worry too much. Well, I'm glad that you still care. But if you aren't watching, then how'd you know about La Fontaine? Oh, I ran into them in the hall. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, so, I was kind of hoping that I could ask you something. Yeah, of course. The immediate thing of all this is that it has been very stressful. Yeah, I know. I haven't exactly seen you in class lately. Yeah, about that. Can I have an extension on my term paper? What? Just for like a week until the big soul-sucking ritual I have to thwart is over. What? Three days? <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe I thought, no, uh, no, instead, you had me come all this way because you can't stay on top of your homework? Seriously? Trying to save four people isn't worth three days. And, wait, can't believe you thought what? Nothing. Did you think that I invited you over here so that we could... No, not anymore, I don't. I can't believe your nerve. I can't believe my nerve? I'm not the one being unfair and vindictive. Well, you're not the one who got thrown over for Elvira, mistress of the snark. Okay, that is so unfair. No, you know what? I'm not having this conversation. If you can't keep your supernatural affairs in order long enough to get your assignments done, that's your business. Come back whenever. This place was cleaner when you were tied up. 
Don't call me again. Oh my god, she hates me. Danny hates me and I'm gonna fail my lit course. Please tell me you're having better luck with the mystical weapon situation. Mm, not so much. A Scalon, an enchanted spear that kills dragons, but only if you're a Christian saint. The scepter of Kyrkion will heal them. The holy hand grenade of Antioch would be perfect for an influx of monstrous rabbits. Wait, what about this one? The blade of Hoster, forged from the burnt bones of star spawn and meant to shatter all that oppose it. Yeah, that sounds pretty... No. Well, I know. Well, it's sealed into the face of a cliff in an underwater cavern like a thousand feet below sea level. Nobody could survive that, which is probably the point. We just need something a little less epic quest and a little more bored from the museum of warfare and atrocities. Maybe a nice bazooka. I could get it. What? The sword. I could get it. Pressure depth and nitrogen and narcosis aren't really issues for a vampire. That would be... I mean, you'd be risking your life, and if your mother found out, she would... Yeah, well, my mother fed the only person I cared about to a monster, and maybe I don't feel like letting that happen again. Wow, that's... I mean, I know that you're not just doing it for me, but seriously... Don't be an idiot. Of course I'm doing it for you. Where'd you get that? I found it here. I thought that you left it... Get it you... off! What? Ah! The... Laura! Hey, no, 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 Laura! Mother. Hello, sweetheart. I thought it was time we had a little talk. What do you want, Mother? You didn't come when I sent for you. I can't imagine poor William was at all unclear. He doesn't quite have the brains for delicacy. So if you're gonna kill me, why not just come yourself? Kill you? When you think of the lengths I've gone to save you from your own foolishness? No. But I thought we should talk without your little friends listening in. Speaking of which. Hmm. Now that was satisfying. That little son of a glitch has been a loose end since he disappeared into that rabbit hole we call the library back in 1874. You didn't have to do that. Yes, I did. Threats to the sacrifice cannot be tolerated. One day you'll understand. Do you think I'm ever going to understand why you fed the only girl I've ever loved to an, an abomination? I think you're a practical girl and you'll see that everything I do, I do for the best. Silly little creature couldn't have loved you. The second she knew what you were, she spilled your secrets like an idiot schoolchild. She was a cockroach, a wretched, crawling thing like this one. And you, my glittering girl, are a diamond. Stone cannot love flesh. See, all I'm hearing are your excuses for why you let a supernatural suck fest turn you into its kitchen staff. And you think you'll be the one to change all that? You'll claw the blade of Hoster from its underwater grave and strike out the light where we worship? It was a good plan, but you won't try it. It's a blade meant to consume anyone who wields it. Why do you think the cult of Hoster buried the wretched thing? <sighs> oh, darling. There's no way for you to fight, and nothing to fight with. Sometimes, that's just the way of the world. And we must learn to bear it as best we can. So if it's all doomed, why even bother coming to tell me? Because I would hate for you to become a threat to the sacrifice. And instead, I thought I'd offer you a deal. If you can keep your little pet here from making more trouble, I'll let you keep her. Take someone else instead. How could I ever trust you? Why don't I start us off with a gesture of good faith? 
William, why don't you bring in your little friend? Hi, sugar puss. Will said you needed some help with your big rescue plan. And I was like, the Zetas are in. You know, we're up to being big damn heroes. Told you Will was a total bro. Isn't he, darling? I do so enjoy chivalry. Hey, Laura, you're acting uh, kind of weird, even for you. Hush, dear. The grown-ups are talking. I thought your hungry little nightlight wanted virgins. Oh, you've been reading Barclay's transcriptions. <laughs> that man was obsessed. No, we just take girls because it's traditional. Besides, the world's just going to grind them up anyway, so it's almost a mercy. Uh, what's she talking about? This one, they'll believe some idiot accident. Perhaps depression over his lost sweetie. So what's it to be? Shall we take the prom king here and leave you in the little moppet alone? Dude, I don't get what she's talking about. Oh, it's cool, bro. You're gonna save Laura. Alright, sweet. Because the other option is I simply waltz this adorable little body right out the door and into the sacrifice. Deal. Excellent. William? Mm. Well, dude, whoa, what are you doing? I'm joking you, bro. Okay. Just joking you, bro. Not cool. No. Remember, she's safe so long as you keep her from meddling. If either of you get in the way again, all bets are off. You've made yourself clear. I should hope so. Now be quick. Catch. Oh, Laura, Laura, hey. Carm, what the? Hey, you're fine. <sighs> it was the necklace. It was, it was just a trap for my mother. It was poisoned. But we got it off in time. Your mom plays dirty. Man, she is going to be so done when you show up all righteous with that sword. Yeah, I don't think she's expecting anything like that. Welcome to midterm week at Silas. Students are scrambling for their exams, the stage is being built for the big party. Party. And in an underground cavern, who knows where a horrific sacrifice is being prepared. That's the bad news. The good news is that we haven't heard anything about any other girls going missing, and with LaFontaine still hogtied and headbanging, the vamps are still too shy of their magic number. Even more awesome than that is that we have totally researched up some mystical, vamp-killing, evil-ending sword that is going to level this tilt-a-world of a playing field. You're gonna go out and grab that soon, yeah? Soon. Good. It will feel a lot better when we are all together and heavily armed. I wish JP was here, but someone seems to have misplaced our non-resident librarian. Are you, are you all right? Yeah. That necklace did a number on me. I feel like I had a whole other brain crammed into my skull. That... that'll pass. Ugh. That is not helping either. But I think it's also this sit tight plan. I mean, what if the vamps just take two more tonight and make with the sacrifice anyway? Well, Laura, this plan keeps you safe. It keeps your friends here safe. That's all we can do. Laura? You're right, it's all that we can do, but what if there were more of us? Remember when I first put the videos up online and all those people that I'd never even met just wanted to help? There is a whole campus full of people out there, and what do you bet they don't want some vampire cult kidnapping their friends any more than we do? Laura, With that many people, we can search every basement and cave until we find them. It's perfect! Laura, that's... I will go get the troops rallied, and you go get the sword, okay? Your mom and her loopy demon light thingy aren't even gonna know what hit them. Don't you have a sword to go get? Yeah, that could have gone better. Uh, so, I got up on the big party stage and I explained to the assembled crowd that the Dean of Students was a vampire who planned on sacrificing five of their classmates to some ancient brain-devouring hungry light and that it was time for all of Silas to rally together. And then unfortunately I was hit in the head with a tomato. Turns out Danny really has not gotten over things. But before the Summer Society could pummel me with more various fruits, the Zetas showed up. Turns out Will and Kirsch are missing, and the last place anyone saw them was headed to this dorm. So the only reason I sit before you now, untarred and unfeathered, 
is because they couldn't agree on who had a better case of using me as a human pinata, and like all of their arguments, it quickly escalated into a free-for-all with paintballs and quarterstaff combat and no concern for the destruction of property. So I snuck to safety when they set the party stage on fire. I go to the party. So much for my big plan. The campus is a war zone, and I don't know what could have happened to Kirsch, and I don't know what to do about LaFontaine or Betty, and Carmilla's still gone, and I'm starting to get worried, and... And apparently my video cache is full from a giant raw file from Wednesday. But that should just be... Hello, sweetheart. I thought it was time we had a little talk. It's time. It's time for the party. I want to go to the party. I know, sweetie. Shh. Not one more step, bloodsucker. What is this? So what's it to be? Shall we take the prom king here and leave you in the little moppet alone? Deal. Excellent. Were you even going to tell me about JP, about Kirsch, about the fact that she possessed me and used me to hurt my friends? Or was it just going to be, sorry babe, no sword, no rescue, that's just the way the world is? Laura, I won't not... let you take her. Laura, she promised to leave us alone. Yeah, just so long as you let her kill my friends. You know, it's not the sword. The sword would kill you and I get that. It's that you just gave up. After everything, you didn't even try. Laura, that's not- Go away, what? Carmilla. Go run and hide. We're done. So college isn't turning out quite like I thought it would. For those of you who have been watching, you know that a couple months ago the Dean, who's evil, kidnapped my roommate Betty to feed some brain-devouring hungry light under the earth. I thought I could save my roommate, and instead all I've managed to do is get my friends brain-sucked and kidnapped, and my heart broken by my sociopathic vampire roommate, who's probably the only one who's going to survive any of this. Also, I'm pretty sure I flunked out. The worst part is that if I just sit here and do nothing, it'll pass me over. I could be safe and go home to my dad, and all I'd have to do is accept the fact that I don't understand the world and that I can't change it. And that even trying would be throwing away my life for it's nothing. It's time. It's time for the party. I have to go. Calm down, sweetie. There's no party. There is, and it's now. The party. The party. Laura, you are not helping. No, I mean the party. When Carmilla did the translation, she said, their world narrows to celebration, but what if it was supposed to be their world narrows to the celebration? Is there a bright light at the party? Yes, party light glittering. And you know how to get there, how to get to the party. I have to go. I won't try and force you. There's no way that we can win. We might not even be able to make a dent. I am supposed to be planning a post-midterms brunch and hassling my best friend because pipettes make crappy stocking stuffers. Some things are more important than whether you can win. So sometimes you stand up anyway. Um, Dad, if you're watching this, sorry for all the stupid things that I've done, and I love you. And Carmilla, if you're watching this, then... Do you know? God damn it. Of all the imbecilic, idiot, suicidal... You just had to go and get yourself eaten. Oh god, you're somewhere getting eaten. Where the hell is Laura? Because this isn't funny. What? I just got a text. Trapped in basement of Old Chapel. Come quick, bring steaks. The Dudley Chapel. The Lustig Building. They're under the Lustig Building. Are you being serious? This isn't a joke? Only the part that's happening right now, Zena. Okay. Get down there, rustle up your broad dignity and sorority sisters and, and get to the Lustig. Hell, even tell the Zetas that's where the missing bros are. And where are you going? To do something really stupid. Is that thing still running? Yeah, I think we're supposed to be filming our soppy, heartfelt goodbyes or something. Screw that. Good call. 
See you at the violence. So a completely unexpected thing just happened. We won. We actually won. We won. And Carmilla's dead. So, Laura's kind of having a rough time right now. So. So, Laura and I followed LaFontaine across campus to the Lustig building, and then down through the basement into a series of caves. I still cannot believe you used me as a human homing beacon. I know, it's just we were getting desperate, and then... No, 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 no. That was hardcore. We do not apologize for the hardcore. I missed you, weirdo. Control freak. Um, right, so then uh, everyone was there. Um, the vampires, the dean, uh, Kirsch, and all the rest, and they were standing at the lip of this enormous chasm with their backs to us, so we rushed them, which was a bad idea. But I did manage to stake that one guy. Will? Oh, sorry, sweetie. It's okay. I mean, you kind of had it coming. <laughs> But then, the rest of the vampires caught us, and they threw Laura and I in an old broom closet to eat later. You know the next part? They forgot to take away Laura's phone, which apparently has really great reception, so I get a text, and with a little convincing, I wrestle up the cavalry. A phalanx of sisters, 40-odd Zetas, armed with a traditional trident's insulted herring. And so we free Laura and Perry, and we rush the vampire line, and we totally had them on the ropes when this rumbling started. And from the bottom of the pit, you could see this light rising, and it was like... Like the sun coming up underground, and you're transfixed by the brightness. Everybody started walking right towards it, because what can you do but give yourself over to this light? Which was the moment this huge cat grabbed me by the scruff of my neck and dragged me away from the edge. And then it shrank and shifted, and there was Carmilla. With a sword. A sword like a hollow in reality, eating light. And when the Dean saw Carmilla, she screamed and came at us in this swarm of shadows, like crows scratching and clawing. And they fought like that until the Dean transformed into a woman again, at which point Carmilla decks her in the face with the sword hilt and she falls into the pit. But it was too late. The light was everywhere. You could see these figures in it reaching out for you. And I think Elle was, was maybe reaching out for Carmilla and Carmilla was crying because in all this time she'd never been able to see her. But then Carmilla turned to me and said, you know, I really am starting to hate this heroic vampire crap. <laughs> and then she leapt, drove the sword right into the heart of the light, and the light shook and sputtered like it was alive, and the ghosts screamed, and they all fell together into the darkness. Once the light was out, I guess the brain parasites died because everyone seemed to wake up, more or less. I was arriving at the wine and cheese, and that's it. I don't even remember if I got any wine. I was on a campus tour. I didn't even want to go to this school. But we were all still stuck in an, an almost completely dark underground cavern with a gang of vampires. Except it wasn't totally dark, because all over the walls and um, in the air were these beautiful glowing puffballs, courtesy of the Alchemy Club. Yeah, it was like having a bar fight in black light. <laughs> and then this other vamp tried to break my arm and... It's like society here, saved my bacon. That was accidental. Hey, even if you save a Zeta's life, you become an honorary Zeta. You get a trident and everything. And, um... You know, it'd be kind of cool if you would... Well, when the chips are down, you're kind of like a bro. Um, and I could sort of use one. Well, finally, all the vampires surrendered. 
except for Carmilla's mom, who was 50 feet down the cliff face, clinging on by her fingernails. Oh, and she was doing the whole, you fools, you don't know what you've done. You'll regret this. Zombies will eat your liver, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and then Laura's like, hey, sorry, the students of Silas University would like a new dean because A, you're a callous evil witch. Yep, that one's it, A. <laughs> and then Laura goes and pushes this rock that's been teetering on the edge, and bam, done with the dean. Even better than that, now that the ancient demonic brain lantern is off, people are finally coming around, realizing they probably should have been upset about going to a school that serves eyeballs in the cafeteria, has safety protocols for escaped caco demons, and where Mortal Kombat is a prerequisite for tenure. The administration is finally going to have to listen to my long, long <clears throat> list of healthy s Yeah. Sorry, Laura. It's okay. Laura, you did it. You saved Betty. You saved almost everyone. Yeah. Almost everyone. Hey. So, after everything that happened, I didn't really feel like filming anymore, but... Perry seems to think it'll be good for me. He'll provide closure or continuity or something. Girl? Seriously. God, her soul possessions are like a pile of empty wallets and some punk rock t-shirts. So Betty's back. Kind of. Turns out she was supposed to be going to Princeton, so she's just here while she's waiting to hear about a transfer. And bleach? I'm going to need all of the bleach. God, how did you not die? She's still a pretty good roommate, as roommates go. She doesn't steal all my things, and she actually uses the chore wheel. Oh, and I didn't fail. Danny got my grade switched to the pass side of pass-fail on account of my saving five students from being eaten and all. <laughs> Professor Cochran actually gave me an A- in journalism. She said that it would have been an A, but desperate last-minute rescues are <gasps> oh bad Oh my god, form. there's blood in the milk container. Why is there blood in the milk container? What is wrong with you people? Why would anyone go to this school? Yeah, we've been having a lot of those since the battle. Aftershocks, I guess? Oh, NJP's okay. Kind of. <laughs> uh, turns out LaFontaine had a backup USB, which is a little weird, but better to have him than not. He and LaFontaine have been spending a lot of time together in the library lately. I think they're kind of dating. Maybe. Perry is dealing with that as best she can. <laughs> I'm gonna miss those two when my dad comes to pick me up for reading week. And look, I know that she was a terrible roommate and kind of a terrible person sometimes and that one big grand gesture doesn't make up for centuries of what's essentially murder, but she was my terrible roommate and she made the big gesture for me. Hey, Laura. Um, so something happened and um, I just wanted to come prepare you so that you wouldn't freak out. So Kirsch and some of his Zeta bros were um, throwing cherry bombs into the big pit under the Lustig and um, they found... Um... Okay, sorry Izzy, but she's heavier than she looks. Carm! Okay. So we think she's... I mean, she seems dead, but she's a vampire, right? Well, blood! She needs blood! Please don't be dead. Please don't be dead. Oh, that was a kick. <sighs> hey. Hey. Are you hurt? It, it looks like maybe you're hurt, and I'm sorry I hugged you so hard that you're hurt. It, it's just that you were dead, and, and now you're not, and, and I know that you're probably going through through a lot of stuff with your mom, it's just that... And I know that you didn't do everything for me, but I just... <laughs> wow. So you're a giant black cat, huh?
we could live forever and suffer. One day without that thing. Oh, come on. Don't you want to record it for posterity? Posterity can bite me. I have better things to do. Oh, come on. They are all dying to know how you survived. I will make it worth your while. Well, it turns out that I hate this place so where, much. Where is it? Where's the book? The, the big Sumerian book. Uh, it's in the washroom. I was using it as a, as a bath mat. It's pretty cushy. Uh, I don't read Sumerian. Uh, uh, Law of Formers, where is it? Where's the page? Mm -hmm. I, I know it talks about sacrificing five versions every 20 years, but does it say anything about what would happen if it ate, say, a very old, very powerful vampire like your mother? We didn't kill it? I have an idea. We just go. We leave for reading week and we never come back. I mean, we can do that, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> 